Hey man, we want to thank you for your patience and uh, uh, I know we now that we have not been using program, but since this is such a momentous occasion, we have a printed program so that you can keep it as a keepsake. As we have this opportunity to share together in our 150th church anniversary. Let us quiet our hearts for our call to worship. The Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silent before him. We have a selection by the music department. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
so that was Sunday hey. school lesson. Amen. 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 I'm not tired yet. Amen. <laughs> what more can I do? What more? Amen. I ain't tired yet. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. This time we will engage in our period of pastoral prayer. And at the top of our list, we are praying for Sister Lolisa July, who yes, husband was funeralized here on yesterday. Yes. Praying for Jasmine and the entire July family. Yes. So truly, when we come to moments like these, we need the strength of God. We continue to pray for Sister Janice Dorsey, Sister. Linda Aldrich, pray for Sister Rose Davis. We saw her on last night. And she to see her. Oh, she here? Let's Good. Go. God bless her. Amen. Bless her. Amen. 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 Pray for Brother Reginald Wallace. His wife told us on last night that he has been readmitted to the hospital. So we pray for him today. We continue to pray for Brother A.C. Jackson. Pray for Sister Angela Reese. Pray for Brother James and Sister Bonilla Jackson. Continue to pray for Sister Ida Jones. Pray for Sister Sheila Mitchell. She's here today. Pray for Sister Dilla, Dilla Glover. Mother Hattie Madison and pray for Sister Maddie Rose and Mother Nettie Pennant. Pray for Sister Elizabeth, Elizabeth Anderson. We pray for Brother Peter Reese and Brother Peter Simmons. Continue to pray for Brother Michael Jackson. Pray for Sister Maggie Davis. Laura Wallace, who's here with us today. We pray for members that are not here for various reasons. Continue to pray for those who are sick. We pray for those who are destitute. Some people have things that they're dealing with that only God can help them with. Yeah, yeah. Some people have a lack of resources. Pray that God will continue to extend his hand and mercy to them. Let us pray. Gracious Father, we thank you for the opportunity to come one more time in prayer. Lord, we call out various names to ask, O Heavenly Father, that you would move your hand of mercy on the July family. Strengthen them in this hour of bereavement. Pray with Heavenly Father for those who are on our sick list. Pray, God, that you will continue to move your healing hand upon them. We called their names a few moments ago. And so, Lord, we look to you. Move in your way. Touch them in ways that they need to be touched. Hold them in the hallow of your divine hand. Lift them up from the beds of affliction. Those who have a lack of resources. Pray, oh, Heavenly Father, that you bless them more so that they can understand and be able to do the things they need to do. But more importantly, recognize that the blessing came from you. Pray, oh, Heavenly Father, for those who have problems in their family and problems on their job. 
problems in many different ways, oh Heavenly Father. Pray, oh Heavenly Father, that you be with them. Then, Lord, we thank you as a congregation that we are here celebrating 150 years for the existence of ourselves as a congregation. You, it was you, oh Heavenly Father, who led those who went, who stepped out on nothing and declared that they wanted to have a house of worship. And Lord, we thank you for all the congregation down through the ages who have stood Sunday after Sunday and proclaimed yeah. Jesus Christ as Lord. Yeah. Yeah. And so, Lord, as we come today, continue to bless us as a congregation that we may be the people that you call it for in these lives and evil days. Lord, we thank you for all the speakers who have spoken during this week. And Lord, we pray for our preacher today, Dr. Scrub, that you'll be with him as he comes and share with us the word that you have given to him. Here we sit, here we stand as a listening congregation, anxious to hear what you have to say to us. Thank you, Lord, for your many blessings. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for being seen and unseen that you have carried us through. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we ask it all. Amen. We have another selection by the music department.
African Baptist in Tuscaloosa and First Baptist itself. Uh -huh. Then, of course, we start getting into uh, other churches. Now, you have churches come up and they will say we were established at such and such date. We can only go on those things that are documented. Right. And so, when we look at what we are here today for the 150th church town in Bridgeport. We had Stone Street that was primary at that time for the free Negroes. And then, of course, there was a little disturbance in the church, and then some of the members left Stone Street and went and founded St. Louis Street. And then as we look at our history, it does not seem to have been any disturbance that caused Corinthians to come out of St. Louis Street. It seemed to be just a necessity of another church because slaves had been emancipated. And there needed to be more churches for them to attend. And so some of the members left St. Louis Street and came over into Maysville and founded Corinthian. Mm -hmm. As we were searching the history, I'm not sure whether Reverend Europa was an associate minister of St. Louis Street or what was his position in the church, but he's seen as the founding pastor of Corinthian. And so we 
saw it not robbery to have this day and not invite the present pastor of our mother church to come and give expression. So we are blessed today to have Dr. William Perry, who is the pastor of the St. Louis Street Missionary Baptist Church, the mother church of Granton, to come and give expression. Amen. 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 Church, amen. 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 Glory be to God, a uh, man, a man in this area. We have really felt his impact throughout the state of Alabama. Great pastor, amen. amen. And we want to acknowledge Dr. Strug, powerful man of God. We thank God for his presence today. We'd all also like to recognize the other brothers and if there be any in the audience, Puppeteers, we want to acknowledge your presence today. Yeah. And we want to congratulate Corinthians Missionary Baptist Church for this historical celebration. Yeah. Amen. And I, I thank you for the opportunity to stand before you today. Amen. Amen. It's truly a blessing to stand before you. Glory be to God. Yes, and I ask myself, and I ask you, how did we get here? Mm -hmm. All right. Glory be to God. Amen. 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 I'm reminded of the hymn, We Have Come. Amen. By faith. Amen. Amen. Leaning on the Lord. Amen. Glory be to God. Amen. Amen. I think about it, how God has looked down through time. Created the situation that we are in right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amen. And as you've already related, Stone Street Missionary Baptist Church. And I want to give you a historical caption on four churches. Okay. Amen. Stone Street Missionary Baptist Church. Three years before the great liber libertarian Abraham Lincoln was born 13 years before Alabama became a state and only 30 years after this nation was born. A courageous religious pioneer named Richard Fields organized the first Baptist church in the state of Alabama, the Stone Street Baptist Church in the year of 1806. An ex-slave called Akadik the name of Richard Fields was commonly known by. He answered the call to become the first pastor of what was then called the African's Church. Glory be to God. Amen. The original church edifice was constructed of bush tops and straw <coughs> held up by connecting poles. It was located near the old graveyard alongside what now is Washington Avenue, right. Government Street. The original church also had a distinction as Uncle Dick Bush Harbor Church. <laughs> Glory be to God. Uncle Dick right. Bush Harbor Church. <laughs> From its inception in 1806, the African church was organized so free men could worship the Lord. <clears throat> Later slaves with, with prior written permission slips could attend as long as they were back in the quarters by specified time. Even, a, even <laughs> under extreme adverse conditions, the church grew by leaps and bounds. So much so that white complained of their large crowds and 
loud noise that characterized that particular style of worship. All right, now. Amen. Much complaining, much complaining, led church members to relocate outside the city of Mobile. They selected a site on Spring Hill Avenue near Ann Street called Sandy Bottom. It was at this location that church called a white pastor named Carter Hawthorne. While at, while at this location, Pastor Hawthorne caused the first split in the church by taking some of its members and forming a new church called St. Louis Street Baptist Church. All right. <laughs> also initially called the African Church, the new church in 1853 was located within the city of Mobile on St. Louis Street. And as we go down, I, I, I think about it often uh, when I'm down in the downtown area was, and I was I thought about how was they able to acquire the property where we are located now in 1869, and we were only eight blocks from where the slaves were sold. Amen. Eight blocks. Glory be to God. But they acquired, I call it prime property in the downtown area. Amen. Nothing is too hard for God. Amen. <laughs> Amen. In 1859, after the descendants of Mobile, descendants of the Cotillia settled in Africa town, they also joined in with members of Stone Street Baptist Church. In 1864, one year prior to the end of the destructive civil war and one year before the end of slavery, the church called another pastor to lead the congregation from Sandy Bottom to its present location. Uh -huh. The new, new pastor was Reverend Benjamin Franklin Brick of Richmond, Virginia, who pastored the congregation for 38 years until his death on September the 27th, 1902. It was Brick who led the congregation to 311 Cleveland Street in 1870. Cleveland Street was later changed to Tomstall Street in honor of former pastor Dr. Charles E. Tomstall. Reverend K.D. Watkins, who pastored from 1907 to 1915, rebuilt Stone Street Baptist Church in 1909. The church received a major renovation in 1931 under the leadership of Reverend M.C. Cleveland. I want to turn your attention now to St. Louis Street Missionary Baptist Church. Right. Amen. We just want to do a, a caption of these four churches to give us a, a better understanding about our history. And I would like to say too, while I stand before you, that it was not shocking to me, but before the Emancipation Proclamation in 1863, we could not have black pastors because they could not be licensed. The first three pastors at St. Louis Street Missionary Baptist Church were Caucasian. Amen. Glory be to God. Amen. We, did, we did, couldn't get licensed to preach. Even though you had the call, there was no license. Amen. Glory be to God. We have them on, our, on the building now, the ones that were, were pastors at that time. St. Louis Street Missionary Baptist Church. St. Louis Street Missionary Baptist Church, located at the intersection of St. Louis and Dilbert Street, 108 North Dilbert, was organized in the year of 1853. The church had its beginning when the 10 original founders succeeded from, from then African, African Church, now known as Stone Street Baptist Church in the early 1850s. For a time, the 10 organizers held their services under the Bush Ladies uh, open air in Mobile. Three successive Caucasian ministers provided early leadership, Bible study, and guidance. Mm -hmm. Reverend C. Hawthorne, the first Caucasian minister, used the teaching of Christ as his means of motivation and as a method for increasing membership under Hawthorne leadership on the Hawthorne's leadership, the first baptism was held in 1855, 
when 26 souls were converted. The baptism lifted the spiritual morale of the, of the body, and the membership grew rapidly under the tenure. Hawthorne served for approximately five years and was succeeded by Reverend A. Jones around 1858. Reverend Jones served as pastor for only two years. However, the membership also increased during this time. His business expertise led to a land led to a land purchase for a building house of worship. During Reverend, Reverend Branch assumed the leadership in the early 1860s. Reverend Branch served for five years and during his watch, the, the ugly head of slavery, followed by the Civil War, brought an end to St. Louis Caucasian leadership. Wow. Reverend, Reverend Branch advised the Negro minister Minister Preacher preach his first sermon from the gospel. His initial task was to develop a plan for a house of worship. When the Civil War ended, he also established mission stations in Mobile, the state of Alabama, and throughout the country, St. Louis Street. Now we have a church called Little St. Louis Missionary Baptist Church. Amen. Glory be to God. Amen. Little St. Louis Street Missionary Baptist Church, which is found in Creole, Creola, Acts East. Everybody from me with Creole, Creola, Alabama. Amen. Amen. That's where Little St. Louis is located. Amen. The history of this church is rich, not only in fact that it is a, a religious uh, institution, but also in the fact that it that this very plot of land in which the church is built mm -hmm. holds great historical and sentimental value. Mm -hmm. In 1866, three years following the Emancipation Proclamation, the very document that led to the end of slavery in the, in the states, this land formerly known as 21 Mile Bluff. Everybody familiar with that? Yes. Was set aside for Ex slaves to worship. In 1866, organized by a group of believers led by Reverend F. Samuels, they gathered on this plot of land in North Mobile County, forming Little St. Louis Missionary Baptist Church. Not only have these grounds been a place of worship, but also where many who lived in and around this area was educated at the school which was named Bluff Elementary School. Glory be to God. Last but not least, great Corinthians Missionary Baptist Church. Uh, Amen. 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 Glory be to God. Amen. Isn't God good? Amen. Amen. In the year of our Lord, 1871, the Corinthians Baptist Church was organized by the St. Louis Street Baptist Church. The first, I didn't under, quite understand that why why St. Louis Street Missionary Baptist Church would organize Corinthians Baptist Church, but let it be. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Glory be to God. The first meeting place was the, the home of Brother James Johnson. The congregation was small in number at this time, but they found strength in Romans 8:39. Amen. No height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Two other sites were used as meeting places. A small edifice erected on the southeast corner of Wanaka and Roma Street. Under the leadership of the church's first pastor, Reverend Henry, and I use the word Europe too, and later at that corner of Warren and Elmira Street. 20 pastors provided leadership during the early church, early church years from 1871 to 1935. 22 deacons assisted the church as well. Some are gone, but not forgotten. December 1961, these deacons were ordained under the pastoral of Dr. E. A. Palmer, Brother Alan Castor. Brother Carl Freeman and Brother Ernest L. 
Freeman Jr. And as I was doing a little homework on this, we, we the legacy that has been attained through these these four churches. I thought it was interesting and that you might would you would probably like to know. And when we we use the word legacy, any anything handed down from our as from an ancestor to a descendant is called a legacy. Glory be to God. Stone Street, 250 years, 215 years, I'm sorry. St. Louis Street, 168 years. Little St. Louis, 155 years. Corinthians Missionary Baptist Church, 150 years. A combination total of 688 years of existence. 688 years. Glory be to Isn't God good? Amen. 688 years. Amen. Amen. Glory be to God. Only God. Only God. Amen. Glory be to God. The grace of God. Only God. Amen. Upon this rock, I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. God bless you today. Your Son, we thank Dr. Perry for sharing those facts with us as we come today. And at this time, our own sister Shamika Brahma will come. And, uh, she has a brief history she has put together for us. And it might be a little overlapping, but don't. Uh, Get the stir, just receive. Amen. Amen. All right. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Corinthian is the oldest Baptist church in the Maysville area of Mobile. The Reverend Henry Europa was the first pastor of Corinthian. From Corinthian's early beginnings until now, 27 ministers, including pastors and supply pastors, have provided spiritual leadership for the development of the church. We have been truly blessed to have many humble, faithful, and spirit-filled pastors and associate pastors, such as Reverend Edward Augustus Palmer, Reverend Leon Teller, Reverend Willie Robinson, Reverend Nathaniel Gibbs Sr., Reverend Willie Gore, Reverend Ralph Jones, Reverend Gregory Reese, and Reverend Winford July. In 1983, more property was purchased at Wanaker Avenue and Virginia Street, increasing the size of the parking area to accommodate the growing membership. We have had some faithful and dedicated deacons who have gained cooperative aid to the pastors and provided great service to the spiritual welfare of the church who are gone but not forgotten. Among them are Deacon Nick Thomas, Deacon Pamela Dockery, Deacon Earl Walker, Deacon Marshall Thomas, Deacon Albert Lesher, Deacon Robert Hill, Deacon Carl Fuller. On July 18, 2000, Corinthian was blessed with another spirit-filled and anointed minister in the person of Dr. Alvin Cleveland Sr. from Dallas County. He is Corinthian's third longest serving pastor with 21 years of service. Our new sanctuary was dedicated in 2011 with the burning of the mortgage in 2018. The sanctuary has been remodeled and the church has just built a new event and dining center at the cost of $1 million. Two assistants of the pastor, Reverend Gregory Reese and Reverend Frederick Thompson, have been called to be pastors themselves. At times, things may have seen grime in the years of 2020 and 2021. In the midst of the pandemic, worship at Corinthian shifted to online communications on platforms such as conference calls and Zoom and our Sunday school, Bible study, and group meetings. Sunday morning service, once just seen by those present, is now being heard by many souls 
through Facebook, YouTube, and the Corinthian website. We utilize online giving through easy ties, drop boxes, and mail. We simulated information and announcements to members through robocalls. When many in Mobile were saying that they didn't have enough to eat, we partnered with Feeding the Gulf Coast. Through this partnership, we were able to provide food for four drive through food giveaways to help those in our community and city. Over 25 members came out following the CDC guidelines and bought 15,000 pounds of food for each food giveaway. <coughs> we must reflect on the chair's memories of our faithful members who were released from their earthly bondage and went to their holy homes in the years of 2020 and 2021. Sister Betty Walker, Mother Lucy Gore, Sister Anna Mason Thomas, Sister Margaret Coleman, Brother Frank Marsh, Sister Ida Eli, and Reverend Winford July. The church was out of the sanctuary from the fourth Sunday in March 2020, and after 16 months of not being able to meet together in person on Sunday, August the 1st, 2021, with mass social distancing, our vaccination records, and our hearts filled with joy, we entered our church house again. Under the leadership of Reverend Alan Cleveland, who has spiritually led us for 21 years, we must continue to work, learn, and pray. We proudly acknowledge the many sacrifices and challenges our church forefathers have overcome over these 150 years. Thank you. 
Thank you, Jesus. Oh, glory to you. With anybody. You can see that the fact that he's here supporting real people from Dallas County today. Amen. Thank you, Lord. And when we look at his life, you got his biographical sketch in the programs. I'm just going to share a few things that are not in there. One of the things that when you look at his life, especially schools he went to. He went to American Baptist College in Nashville, which is a Bible college like Seven University. And I said some of this in the piece I did on um, Reverend Fred Shuttleworth. Shuttleworth went to Seven University. But oh, up at American Baptist College, you had people who were social gospel advocates. They believed in preaching the gospel as we did at Selma, but they were fighters. They produced such preachers as the Reverend John Lewis. You know him. He died a little over a year ago. Reverend Barnard Lafayette, Reverend James Bell, and the Reverend Dr. Julius Scruggs. People who took Jesus serious in talking about holistic ministry. A person ought to be free in all aspects of his existence, not just the spiritual side. Right. And listen to Billy Graham, and we used to listen to him, and he's talking about you need to be saved. But when you talk about people who are, got a social gospel consciousness, they talk about being free in terms of economics Amen. and where you live Amen. and all of these Amen. things. And he has been about that all of his life. I remember when we were getting ready to re-elect President Obama, uh, Obama, how he brought all the black Baptists together. Primitive Amen. Baptists, Amen. all of the wings of the missionary Baptists, he brought them all together. Yeah. So we got to get behind this man. We got to re-elect this man. He stood up and he preached at the National Baptist uh, sermons that show us our social gospel consciousness. And so we, we thank him for being that kind of leader. But the thing that I love the most about him is that he worked with me when I was president of Seven University. Support him, Seven University, doing the things that needs to be done. He came and be, to be president of the Alabama Baptist. At a time that we were at a low ebb, so 11 years, and he took us to a height that we had never known before, nor since. And of course, he went on to be president of the National Baptist, following a person that he had worked with to restructure the National Baptist, because when Dr. Shaw came over, National Baptist was at a low ebb, and his vice president, Dr. Stroh, Two of them worked together to restructure the National Baptist. 
there's always been one uh, who has been successful. He's uh, president emeritus, emeritus of the Alabama Baptist, the past emeritus of First Baptist Church in Huntsville, and of course he is the former uh, president of the National Baptist. When people give you a tight emeritus, that means that they you, you did a great job and they want to always be attached to you. Lord, Amen. And, and that's why he's presently emeritus of the state convention of Alabama and also the church that he served for many years in Huntsville. And so uh, we're going to sing our introductory hymn. We understand it better by and by since we are talking about the history of a great church. And uh, let us stand on our feet as we sing together in 418. Next morning, it will be that of our preachers.
share with you today on this historic and momentous occasion, your 150th church anniversary. I want to thank him for the hospitality of this weekend and his deacon Samuel and Mrs. Royal. I think she's a member somewhere else, but anyway, she's been part of the hospitality committee. Mrs. Cleveland, and all, thank you so much. As Dr. Cleveland said a moment ago, we've had the blessed privilege of being friends now for many years. We've been acquaintances for about 44 years, and we've been friends for about 21 years. We became friends when we started working together at Selma as he became the president there. And we had great relationship in that area of service and ministry. And we thank God for his presidency at Selma and for the years that he led the school and the good that was done under his leadership. And we thank God for his leadership here with you over these 21 years as well. Now, it is preaching time. And it's an interesting time to preach. I pastored for 59 years and decided by the Lord's guidance to retire. And I'm glad I'm retired. <laughs> the Lord retired me at the right time, just prior to the pandemic. I was telling Dr. Cleveland yesterday that one of the interesting things about the pandemic 
is that those who are technologically savvy can handle it much better. Uh -huh. I'm not technologically savvy. <laughs> All of my latter years at First Missionary Baptist Church, I had at least one to three secretaries or administrative assistants as well as staff ministers. So I didn't have to do that technological stuff. <laughs> but that was bad because it shows up now. <laughs> when I need to be more technologically savvy, I'm not. So sometimes when we bypass stuff, it comes back to slap us in the face Amen. or somebody says, come back to bite you. Amen. But anyway, it has been a joyful journey these many years that the Lord has blessed me to be a preacher. Bless Glory be to God. This is my 63rd year in preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, yesterday, Sister Royal almost made me bow, and I told her, I'm riding on the back seat, and she's chauffeuring me. And she said something, and I forgot what it was, but it led to my age. <laughs> and she looked at me from the front seat and said, she had stopped at the light, by the way, too, so we wouldn't get killed. <laughs> she said, you... You look to be about 60 years old. I said, Sister Royal, if I weren't in this car and you weren't in this car, I'd bow down in front of you. Because <laughs> I'm not 60 years old. I've been past, I mean, excuse me, I've been preaching 63 years. So that surpasses her 60. So her remarks just flattered me. Yeah. And sometimes we like to be flattered. <laughs> wives, wives should remember that husbands like to be flattered. <laughs> and husbands should remember that wives like to be flattered. <laughs> Well, I could go on and on with preliminaries, but I need to get the word of God in, and you need to go home after that. In the hundred and, excuse me, in the 100th Psalm, I want to concentrate for today. It is different from your text, but the celebration is not different from your celebration. Right. I'm going to read the whole psalm, and we'll have prayer, and then I'm going to tell you how I'm going to back into the text. All right. Psalm 100. Make a joyful shout to the Lord, mm -hmm. all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Mm -hmm. Come before his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who has made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful to him, and bless his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. His, his truth endures to all generations. Amen. Join me in a moment of prayer. Eternal God, uh, we thank you today for the privilege of being here with the Corinthian Baptist Church family and its pastor, yes, Reverend Dr. Alvin Cleveland. We thank you for blessing this church to have a 150-year journey. And we thank you, God, that you've been with them every step of the way. We pray today that you would bless these moments of preaching, that you would glorify your name, 
that you would edify this body of Christ and that you would let your name be magnified among all of us. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Now, Psalm 105a reads, For the Lord is good. And that's where I want to start. Psalm 105a, For the Lord is good. And then I want to back into the rest of it. Verse 2b says, Come before his presence with singing. And verse 4 reads, Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Go back up to 5A. For the Lord is good. All right. And I want to talk today about celebrating 150 years of the goodness of God. All right. All right, man. Celebrating 150 years of the goodness of God. Of God. One of the main attributes of God is His goodness. I don't think there's any serious Christian in this church or listening to us in a virtual space or setting will argue that this is not true. All right. Every serious Christian will affirm that God is good. No matter what the situation or what the circumstance, what's going on outside, inside, upside, downside, around side, whatever side, the serious Christian always confirms that God is good. I had a friend who stood in his pulpit probably some 38 to 40 years ago. I forget exactly the year. But I had gone to preach for him in another city and state. He gave the call to worship, and he simply said, as he looked at the congregation, God is good. And the congregation answered all of the time. And that was the first time I had heard that kind of invitation given as a call to worship. But I must confess that I was blessed and impressed. All right. All right. And I never forgot that. All right. And of course, since that, it's been more traditional in various places. Let me raise this question with you. Is God good because my friend stood in the pulpit and said to his congregation that God is good? Is God good because the psalmist wrote in the book of Psalms, God is good? Or is his goodness deeper than that? I think it's deeper than that. Because long before my friend stood in the pulpit and said, God is good. And long before the psalmist said, God is good. God was already good. Because God is intrinsically and inherently and essentially good. The only reason we know that God is good is because he revealed to us in the Bible that he's good. And because he gave us the revelation about his goodness in the Bible, that in itself becomes an act of grace. He didn't have to do that. But because he did it, it's an act of grace. And we can thank God for his grace and his goodness. So it's a little wonder then that the psalmist could invite us to celebrate the goodness of God. Uh And on this day, he suggests to us that we can lift up at least Three things from this 100th Psalm to help us to celebrate the goodness of God or how to celebrate the goodness of God. 
in the first place, he says that we ought to celebrate the goodness of God with joyful song. Yes. With joyful song. Come before his presence with singing. The people of Israel, Old Testament covenant people of Israel, were a singing people. In fact, when you read the book of Psalms, you will discover in research that it was really called earlier the Psalter. That's right. That's right. It's a book of Psalms. It was a hymn book. Yeah. Like yeah. our hymn book today. They, they collected these songs and they put them together in an anthology and it became the 150 psalms in the book of Psalms. And Israel would gather in her special days and on special occasions, and she would sing these songs unto the Lord. All right. All right, Sometimes the choir master would call the Levitical choir and say, on this day, we're going to sing Psalm 24. Hymn 24. Yeah. And they would look up at the big thick walls of Jerusalem. Yeah, yeah. Fortifying the city. Yes, sir. And they'd look at the tall gates. Yeah. Yes, sir. And they would begin to sing. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the king of glory oh, yeah. shall come in. And one of the tenors antiphonally would say, Who is the king of glory? And the choir would answer, The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. The Lord of hosts. He is the king of glory. On other occasions, the choir master would say to the Levitical choir, Let's turn to hymn 27 and let's sing. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my light. Whom shall I be afraid? When my enemies and my foes came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and failed. And then other times when they would gather together, they would just want to pour out their souls unto the Lord. And so the choir master would say to the Levitical choir, let's turn to hymn 103 and let's sing, bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all, A-L-L, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, yeah. and forget not all of his benefits. Israel was a singing people because she was summoned to come before the Lord with singing. Now if Israel, the Old Testament covenant people, could come before the Lord with joyful song, how much more should we new covenant folk on this side of Calvary, yeah. on this side of the resurrection, yeah. how much more should we come into his presence yeah. with singing? Yeah. In fact, Paul says in the New Testament in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 19, that we ought to speak to one another in psalms yes, and hymns yes. and spiritual songs, yes. singing and making melody in our hearts unto the Lord. Yes, sir. So we ought to come before the Lord with singing. Yeah. 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 We ought to come singing extolling his love. Yes, sir. There is a name yes, sir. I love to hear. Yes, I love to sing his word. Yes, sir. It sounds like music yes, sir. in my ear. Yes, the sweetest name yes, on earth. Yeah. Oh how I love Jesus. Yes, Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. 
because he first loved me. We, we ought to come in here singing and highlighting his faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All that I've needed, thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. And then sometimes we ought to come in accentuating his joy. Yeah. Because as Nehemiah said to us, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Yeah. And when you know the joy of the Lord is your strength, you can come in singing about his joy. Yeah. And, and that's a little jingle we do in the church from time to time. You know it, don't you? This joy I have. The world didn't give it to me. The world didn't give it. And the world can't take it away. Aren't you glad today? on your 50th anniversary, 150th anniversary, yeah, yeah. that you have the joy of the yeah, Lord yeah. in your heart yeah. and nobody can take it from you. Yeah. Mr. McConnell can't take it. No, no. Donald Trump can't take it. No. The devil in hell can't take it. The imps with him can't take it because it's deep, deep, deep down in my heart. This joy Come on, I had. Yes, the world didn't give it to me. And the world can't take it away. Israel was a singing people and we ought to be a singing people. We ought to come into his presence singing. Next thing the psalmist says is that we ought to celebrate the goodness of God by being thankful. Yes, Showing up in the assembly with thankful hearts enter, that's the text enter into his gates with thanksgiving now may I remind us as Christians that all genuine worship involves thanksgiving because just to think about God is to be thankful. I don't think you can really seriously think about God and not come away thankful. And so we Christians are summoned to worship God with thankful hearts. Thankful for what? Thankful for at least two things about God. Thankful for who he is and thankful for what he's done. Yeah, yeah. We ought to be thankful for who he is. Yes, on, who is he? All right. He's the God who's perfect and pure. Yeah. He's the God who's high and holy. Yeah. Right. He's the God who's transcendent and imminent. Yeah. He just doesn't sit up in heaven, but he comes to earth to see about. Yeah. Aren't you glad our God is a God whose throne is in heaven, but whose footstool is on earth. And he covers all the territory in between. I love a God like that. He is mighty and merciful. He is glorious and great. He's the sovereign savior for the whole world. He's king of kings and Lord of Lords. Yeah, yeah. And he's more than that. When the theologian Paul Tillich was trying to talk about God and define him and describe him, he said he's the ground of being. That's right. But it's like an old lady in the church once. Somebody was testifying. You know how we used to do it in Baptist church? Uh -huh. You have them testifying. Somebody had gotten them testifying and talking about God and how good God was. And when the person sat down, the old lady murmured, mm, he's better than that. <laughs> well you know what every time somebody says something good about God somebody else ought to say he's better than that but when Paul Tillich says he's the ground of being he's better than that when Carl Bart said he's the holy other he's better than that when Borden Parker Brown says that 
he's supreme personality or a supreme person, he's better than that. When Harry Emerson Fawcett says he's an inexhaustible source of strength, he's better than that. When Reverend Cleveland gets through preaching and I get through preaching and all these other preachers get through preaching, whatever we say about God, he's better than that. We ought to be thankful because of who he is. He's the great God of the universe. And then we ought to be thankful for what he's done. And I can sum that one up in one main event. Whenever you want to talk about the pivotal event of what God has done, just go to Calvary. Go to Calvary. Camp out at Calvary. Well, it was there that God loved us so much that he gave his only begotten son to stand in our stead and die in our place. We had sinned, all of us had sinned, and come short of God's glory. And we were supposed to die for our sin. Yeah. Ezekiel said the soul that sinned shall die. Yeah. Paul said the wages of sin is death. Yeah. All of us are supposed to die and go to hell eternally for our sin. Yeah. But God said no you my children. I created you. And I don't want you in hell. I want you with me. Yeah. I'm sending my son to Calvary yeah. to stand in your stead. Yeah. To take your penalty of death. Yeah. And Jesus who was without sin, yeah. knew no sin, yeah. became sin for us yeah. that we may become the righteousness of God. Yeah. Thank God for Calvary. Glory. And when we look at Calvary today, we can see him again. Jesus paid it all. Yeah. All to him I owe. Yeah. Sin had left the crimson stain and he washed it white as snow. Well, thank God for who he is and for what he's done. Now, on your special day, Corinthian, you ought to thank God for 150 years. Generation after generation across these 150 years. That's right. He's been walking with you. And you can sing like Brother Thompson in our church who used to lead down through the years. The Lord's been good to us. Yeah. Down through the year, the Lord's been good to you. You were established in 1871. Yeah. Eight years after the Emancipation Proclamation yeah. was signed by Abraham Lincoln. W.E. Du Bois calls these years the mystic years, ten mystic years. Yes, sir. 1867 to 1877. Du Bois says those were the mystic years. Yes. Well, why did he say that? Because ebony folk who were just eight years out of slavery, Man. and you talked about that, Reverend Barry, yes, just eight years out of slavery began to save money and buy land. Glory all right. Right. But most of all, they went out and voted. Yes, sir. All right. yes, sir. Yes, sir. And you know what? This, this is no stuff. This is, this is fact, historical fact. In those 10 years, they went to the polls to vote. Yes, sir. They voted in local leaders, yes, sir. state leaders, All right. and national leaders. It's right. It's right. It's right. It's right. Up in Huntsville, Alabama, the founder of Alabama A&M University, yes, William Hooper Council, became a legislator, an elected legislator yes, in the state of Alabama. Amen. Served two years as the state clerk, yes, sir. but then decided that he needed to give most of his time back at A&M. So he gave up the legislator and went back to rebuild, keep, keep building the university. And of course, it is to where it is today in part because of what he did. Yes, sir. He founded it. But way back then, our Four parents yes. were doing all these wonderful things and so many more that I could mention that I don't have time. But I'm just pulling this in because you were founded in 1871. Yeah. The middle of those 10 mystic years when black folk were going to polls voting, voting in state 
local and national offices. And parenthetically, you know what's happening? White folk are doing today exactly what they did then. That's right. That's right. Because here's what they did. When they saw all these black folk going to the polls to vote, yes, sir. voting in black folk in local office, yes, voting in black folk in state office, yes, voting in black folk going to Congress, yes. in the United States Congress, yes, sir. they said, we can't take this. No. These Negroes just right out of slavery. Yes, sir. Now they walking up beside us, officers, elected officials like us. No, we can't take that. So they allowed something to jump up called Jim Crow. Jim Crow laws. Laws against black folk. Taking our rights away. Our right to vote. Our right to ride anywhere on a bus that we wanted to ride. Yes, Back in those days, they didn't have any buses. Ride on the buggy yes, anywhere we wanted to ride. Yes, Stand up and be men and women. Yes, Stand up and be equal to them. Yes, because God made us equal to them yes, way back before they were born. Yes, but they couldn't take that. So they started passing all these laws, yes, sir. trying to put us back in our place. Yes, right. Let them tell it. Uh -huh. And not only did they do that, but at the peak of that period, they started lynching yes, sir. our four parents. Yes, right. They had lynching parties. That's right. you, you can read it in the books. It's there. That's right. They put lynchings in the newspaper, yes, sir. inviting yes. folk to come to lynching. Yes, well, they lynched our full pack. Yes, they talked about it in their villages, yeah, yeah. in their locales. Yeah. We're going to lynch so-and-so on such-and-such -such a date. Be there. But you know what? In the midst of that low-down, I'm talking about my mama used to talk. In the midst of that low-down, dirty way. <laughs> God kept on working Glory. on our behalf. Glory. Because right in the midst of their lynching, God let you build this church. Yes, 1871, yes, from Europe or European, or however you want to pronounce that, European, <laughs> founded this church yes, and established its going in the law. And then later, the, the Reverend, was it Palmer? Yeah. The Reverend Palmer moved it higher and higher. Yeah. God worked right in the midst of their low down, dirty ugliness yeah. for this church's behalf. Yeah. And he allowed preachers to preach sermons of hope yeah. and encouragement, uh -huh. trust in God. Hold on to God. It's going to get better. But that's all we just say. Yeah. By and by. Yeah. It's going to get better. Because sometimes that's all you got to hold on to is hope. Yeah. You ever been in a dark night? When you didn't know what the morning was going to look like or whether it's going to come or not? Yeah. All you had to hold on to was hope. Yeah. You got to hold on to hope, keep hope alive, Jesse Jackson used to say. Sometimes that's all we got. So the pastors kept preaching and kept telling folk, keep hope alive. And you kept it alive. And you're here today with Reverend Cleveland. Because you kept hope alive. So God has brought you all the way through these dark days. These mystic years that Two boys talking about. And he brought you to this day. And I'm hurry, and I'm hurrying to get on through here. He, he brought you to this day to Dr. Cleveland's administration. 21 years of continued progress. Yes, sir. Refurbishing this building. Yes, sir. Making it larger, making it more beautiful. Yes, sir. Because you see, when God is in a place, it ought to be beautiful. Yeah, yeah. Not, not, nothing is too good for God. 
if you want a Cadillac, if you want a Mercedes Benz, if you want a Rolls Royce, because I don't want a Rolls Royce. <laughs> but whatever you want, you ought to want God to have more than that. Because he makes everything possible. So God has brought you to this administration under this your pastor. And he's carrying out the mandates of Jesus Christ. Yeah. To give water to the thirsty. Yeah. Feed the hungry. Yeah. Clothe the naked. Yeah. Take in the strangers. Yeah. Visit the sick. Yeah. Care for the prisoners. Yeah. And to go on with the ministry yeah. of the Lord Jesus Christ. So one final note in this sermon. And I'll be through. Not only should we come before his presence with singing to celebrate his goodness. Not only should we come with thankful hearts in his gates with thanksgiving to celebrate his goodness. But the final word is, and enter into his courts with praise. Yes, sir. Glory. We ought to come with joyful shouts of praise. Yes, sir. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and the courts with praise. When you come through those doors, those gates back there, those doors over here, those doors over here, wherever the rest of the doors are, you ought to come in with praise in your heart. Yeah. Praise on your lips. Yeah. Come to praise the Lord. Yeah. Choir says from the going down, of, from the rising of the sun until the going down of the same. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Yeah. But may I add a little of that? After the sun has gone down, Keep on praising. Wake up in the midnight hour. Praise his holy name. Oh, he's worthy to be praised. And if you want a model of praise, go from the 100th Psalm over to the 150th Psalm. Well, it's a model of praise. He opens it up by saying, who should praise him? Let everything that hath breath yes, praise the Lord. Yes, if you can inhale yes. and exhale, yes. praise the Lord. Yes. If you're sitting in here breathing, yes. praise the Lord. Yes. Let everything that hath breath yes. praise the Lord. Yes. And then it says, where? Should we praise him in his sanctuary, yeah. in the firmament, yeah. up in the heavens, the stars, the sky, the vaulted blue skies, beautiful clouds, praise him. Yeah. Then he says, why we ought to praise him. Praise him for his excellent greatness. Yeah. Praise him for his mighty deeds. Yeah. Then he says, how we ought to praise him. He said, praise him with the harp. Yeah. Praise him with the trumpet. Yeah. Praise him with the string instruments. Yeah. Praise him with the dance. Yeah. Praise him with the cymbals. Yeah. Praise him with the high sounding cymbals. Yeah. Let everything yeah. that has breath yeah. praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Yeah. He's worthy to be praised. Well, I close as I tell you this. Whenever we are praising the Lord, we are more like heaven. Because that's all that heaven does. Heaven just praises the Lord all day long. Ain't no night up there. All day long. They just praise the Lord. If you don't believe me, come on and go with me to heaven right quick. Let's take a mental excursion. When we get up there, here's what's going to happen. We're going to see 24 elders. All 24 of them got golden crowns on their heads. And guess what they're doing? They're taking off their golden crown, laying them down at the feet of God. And they're crying, you are worthy to be praised. They are crying, uh, you are worthy to receive glory and honor. And then if you look over a little further, 
They are four living creatures. In the King James Version, they call four living beasts. And these four living creatures are, are bowing prostrate in the presence of God. And they're crying, Holy, Holy, Holy is the Lord God Almighty who was who is and whoever shall be and, and then if you look a little further around the throne of God there are angels encircling the throne archangels and angels 10,000 times 10,000 times thousand and all of them are just crying and singing worthy worthy is the Lamb of God uh, who was slain from the foundation of the world uh, to receive blessing uh, and honor and riches uh, and power and glory uh, and praise. Everything uh, up in heaven uh, is praising the Lord. Uh, get in tune uh, with heaven uh, and praise the Lord. If you got breath, in your body let everything that have breath praise the lord he's worthy he's worthy he's worthy he's worthy he's worthy he's worthy to be praised country have you tried the man? Yeah. Have you tried it? You know he's all right. Yeah. Hey, man. Hey, man. Hey, man. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Yeah. For that message. I saw a story in heaven. I thought of my, about my little old mama. She's up there. Yeah, yeah. She's in that crowd. Yeah. Amen. Yeah, Amen. Yeah, All of these folks, 150 years. Yeah. That's these shores. Yes, yeah. That land where the sun never go down. Yeah. Amen. This is what this celebration is all about. We extend an invitation to Christian discipleship. There may be somebody here. Yeah. You want to come to Christ, come by living, come by Christian experience, come as a candidate for baptism. We invite you to come. Give your life to Christ if you've never accepted Him before. Come now. Give your life to Christ. If you're looking for a church home, you're already saved.
God has greatly Amen. blessed us these three Great days. Yeah. On Friday night with the community affair that was well attended. We had religious leaders, political leaders, and, and our associate pastors. We have gone out from this church to pastors to give some remarks. You were there. We thank God for you. Last night, uh, we had an awesome Yes, hey, 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 <laughs> I want to let you know that in the back they're going to have the history book and the journals if you already paid for the history book and journal all you got to do is pick it up if you want to purchase a history book which is $25 or a journal which is $5 you can get it in the back so um, Keep that in mind after we give the benediction. I want to let you know that everybody who's sitting here, in here, has been invited to lunch over in the uh, dining and activity center. We're following all the CDC guidelines. You don't have to worry about anything. All you got to do is just go over there and eat. And I got I got a group over there right now who been working all morning getting things ready and you'll insult them if you do not go over there and eat. So make sure you go. And then you get the opportunity to some of you may want to personally uh, greet Dr. Scrub or shake his hand, well you know, we can give him opportunity to eat now. But, I know how important that is. Years ago, I had the opportunity to have the late Dr. James Cohn, who is the father of black theology, to be my professor at Howard. And um, I had to do a paper in his class. And at the end, he wrote, and this is a good paper, Alan. I'm expecting great things from you. That meant so much Amen. to me. Just to have somebody of his caliber teaching at Union Theological Seminary in New York City to say that to me in writing. Now, I still got it somewhere now. Amen. Amen. I'm trying to live up to the old words. I tell you, things like that just touch your heart. And so, to have the opportunity to Mix and mingle with one of the president of the National Baptist Convention who got over churches in the United States and uh, all over the world, especially in the islands, all of those churches part of the National Baptist Convention. So to have that opportunity to be something that you can uh, remember. And you might want him to just write his name on your program. Ain't no shame in that for you. Autograph. Amen. Uh, one of the honorees on last night, Uncle Pete, uh, was so touched by the award that he received. And uh, Peter Reese is a special person in our yeah. church. Yeah. I call him my uncle because he never forget anything that's going on as, as it relates to me. He always remember. And, uh, he remember by greasing my poem or something. Amen. And that make you remember <laughs> And so his niece is going to just come and, and, and give greeting to him and then we'll be ready to get the benediction. I know he's a great civil rights man. I ain't know about the football aspect. Hello, everyone. Hello. Yeah. We just, I'm like 
uh, Deacon Mee said, we've we just been high falutin all weekend. <laughs> <laughs> and it's really beautiful. Before I begin, I would be remiss to say, had it not been for this beacon of light in this community, like many of you here that I grew up with, we don't know where we would have been. Okay. So I, I could not not say that. But yes, we all do love Uncle Pete, to, uh, to Pastor Cleveland, Sister Cleveland, Dr. Stubbs, to all the pulpit, uh, if there are ministers, anyone that's previously addressed. Uh, my Uncle Pete is just old Joe, and he, all he talks about is coming to church and singing in the choir. Of course, we know right now he's not able, but God has really just been keeping him and pushing him along. So, you know, I told him that I would let you all know exactly, you know, how he felt. Mm -hmm. And to my, especially to his Corinthian Missionary Baptist Church family, from the children to the adults, he greases all of our palms. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Psalm 37 and 23 says, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Uncle Pete, as we all so fondly call him, wants you to know how much he loved and misses all of you. He loved his family, church, and the NAACP. I was so honored to accept his award at the beautiful banquet last night, and it was just awesome. He is over the top excited, and I can't imagine his face when he sees his historical write-up and our civil rights um, uh, restores. He was restored uh, from being sick. I'm just like overcome, because my uncle has, you all know Uncle Pete has been in and out of the hospital. Yeah. So just forgive me, uh, but anyway, um, often we ponder, when you look in the face of death mm -hmm. and God has a cause you, which he's done to Uncle Pete many times, he restores you to a reasonable portion of health. Often we, especially Baptists, we'll say, well, you know, he's saving us for more work to do. Mm -hmm. But when you have poured yourself into God and the work you've done speaks to you, like I've seen in my Uncle Pete, because your health has failed, you can't work, you know, as you would like to, and you can't come to church. But it's not so much always that God saves us for extra work. Amen. Sometimes God saves, saves us. So for the work that you have done, he can bestow blessings upon you. That's right. Peter Reese Jr. wants you to know that God is keeping him and he's doing well. All he talks about is church, and he loves you all, and you all know that. Um, he's praying to come back, and we're praying with him. From the children to the adults, Uncle Pete is always blessing us with cards and gifts. He knows how special he is to us. He wants you to know you are a blessing to him. May we all be a blessing to one another. And God is good, and there's nothing too hard for God. That's right. And there's nothing too hard for the saints of God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. 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 Thank Okay, you're in a difficult position there Friday night, see me King Frazier, and I, and I, I feel like Cisco King, you just got two teachers. <laughs> Amen. It's good to see Douglas July in, in playing music for us. As you know, we humanized his baby brother yesterday. And it's good to see him come share with us today. Amen. So let us keep these things in mind as we get ready to go. Go through here. If you don't, if you're not familiar with Corinth, just go out the door, go down the hall, go through the auditorium. You can get the journal and the history book if you want it, and then go on out the back door and you go into the other building. Now, the congregation surprised me last night because we just got that building built. And of course, the Dedicated last Sunday. And this weekend was the first events we had in because of the pandemic. But they surprised me and they said, now from now on, this building is going to be known as the Dr. Allen A. Cleveland Senior 
Yeah. So you'll be walking into the Dr. Allen and clean the suit. <laughs> Amen. 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 So let us keep those things in mind. We thank you so much for all you've done. Everybody on the program been magnificent. Sister Grandma gave us so many good thoughts on that church history today. And we just thank her for it. I knew she could do it. I asked her to do it. I just had no doubt about it. And uh, she never turns me down. Sometimes she may want to, but she never turns me down. Whatever I ask her to do. So thank you so much for that. So let us stand and we're going to have our preacher come back and give us the if it meant Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for this special occasion in the life of the Corinthian Baptist Church, blessing them to walk with you for 150 years. Pray that these moments that we shared with food and fellowship will be blessed by your Holy Spirit as you continue to work in us both to will and to do according to your own good pleasure. Pray for Pastor Cleveland and for all of the membership of this church that you would continue to keep them in your care, guide them day by day that they may be light in this world, salt to this earth. You may use them to your glory and to your honor. Now may the love of God, the grace of Jesus Christ, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all now and always. Amen.